Yeah, response video to the Holiday Piro Skyzer conversation. I don't know why they bother with Skyzer. Uh but anyway, whatever. Um, so I took notes mostly for the beginning part, but there's a clip, you know, you just have to play it because it's just so it's just so typical. <laughs> I mean it's just too perfectly stupid, so it has to be done. So I just I'll move through this as quickly as possible. So um, Piero starts off with one of his, you know, he just dominates the whole conversation. He just keeps droning on and on. So he's pro-choice on procreation. Um, I was having a conversation with Hathaway about ethics. Okay, these people don't seem to understand that that's what the conversation was. It wasn't about ethicism or even antinatalism. It was just about where you get your ethics from. I'm explaining a philosophy based on ethics, based on logical observation of the real world, evolution, its implications, what psychology is, and ultimately what a thinking mind is going to make of this mess. Um, and these assholes are talking about something else, social contracts and other bibble babble. And you can't get them on the subject, so there's just no point. But anyway, so Piro's pro-choice on procreation. So this very important thing you can do, this, you know, a little more important than driving cars, a little more important about, there's about nothing you could do that could be more important than deciding to basically animate non-living matter, play Frankenstein, um, create a welfare interest completely dependent on your influence in terms of its outcome, in terms of its destiny. Um, and uh, yet he, th he thinks people ought to be pro-choice. They ought to have that right intrinsically as if it was given to them or bestowed by some kind of real test or real earnership. So he doesn't believe people should earn anything. They should just be given it, uh, you know, um, which is ludicrous. You, you know, you have to demonstrate your competence before you're allowed to do something important or something impositional. So again, to deny it's an imposition, to deny you're playing with somebody else's welfare is such a non-starter. I mean, can, can we agree that that's not an acceptable starting position to say you're not doing that, that you're not affecting the destiny of some other creature by creating it? I mean, I mean, if we can't, if we can't agree that's a non-starter, then there's just, what's the fucking point in talking to these idiots? Um, it's, it's just a waste of time. Just nuke them from space. Yeah, just, this is just idiotic. There's no logical anything here if you can't even accept the premise that you are influencing by creating. I mean, shit. I mean, I said it before, you can't get more up somebody's ass than shoving them out your vagina. I mean, Jesus Christ. <sighs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, and his basic philosophy is, yeah, do it, have fun. Uh, if it goes wrong, fuck them. Fuck it. Who cares? Victim? Fuck victims. That's their philosophy. They don't account for them. They don't make any acknowledgement of their existence. They just say, fuck the victims, have fun. Um, if that's what you want to do, fine. Um, that's the extent of their ethical philosophy. It's bankrupt. It's worse than bankrupt. It's, it, w it's, it, w it was a loan mortgaging a house they don't own. It's just, it's just a lie. It's nonsense. It's disgusting evasion. Um, and, and, you know, he basically is saying the only thing you have to worry about is yourself. What, what do you want? That's the extent of his ethical code. All right. Um, people should be allowed to impose their optimism, is my question, um, no matter how um, unfounded in logic, right? So, again, he, he's going to turn this into a negativism uh, argument, saying effless or negativism. And no, they're, they're saying it's, this is the reality of the circumstance. So if you want to play that game, then we just call you optimists, unrealistic optimists, and discount your philosophy. So if you want to play that kind of tennis, touche is all I can say, right? Uh, volley on. Because, yeah, we can hit that ball back uh, with the same exact words. Um, we don't consider your optimism realistic. Um, uh, so anyway... Uh, life is a pointless parasitic infestation. Is this, is, is this true or not true? Do you have evidence that there's something else going on on planet Earth besides parasites eating parasites? Is there some evidence of some organism that exists on this planet that isn't fundamentally a parasite on other organisms? Can you show it to me? Can you give me a picture of it? I don't think so. 
So you won't accept the premise, you won't accept the foundation of our existence, which is it's just replicating matter, it's uh, involved in a carnage war, just to have a momentary victory to say, I survived. And um, you're all stroking each other because that's what you're horny to hear. And that's all. You're just horny for it. It's not logical, it's just horny. Um, all right. <clears throat> so it's uh, more to negativism, as we said. Um, and he's conceding that there's this less than zero, um, zero sum game problem. Um, that, that at least he's got that part of the argument correct. Um, but his, his theory is that no, there is some real positive that you can get to and that the human race has some realistic prospect of getting to some place where it's going to be doing things so well and everything is so efficient, so clean and so wonderful that oh, there's no problem whatsoever and that we will be making so much profit in terms of our joy, joy, joy that it will make up for all the, the horrors, all the smallpox, all the blights, all the cholera, all the horrors, the plague, World War I, World War II will all be evaporated from the meaningfulness because we'll be creating so many bliss points. That's his fucking theory. I'm sorry. Sounds like crap to me. Um, Alright. Uh, must value the circular... Therefore, must value the... Oh, okay, yeah, the calculator. Therefore, the calculation. So, Skyser has this idiotic um, theory that the reason why humans are valuable is because they can show up and um, declare value. And so, like, somehow that's just... That, that, you know, it's, it's just completely circular. It's like, you know, he's got this idea that, well, because Skyser can be in the audience applauding Skyser in the play, therefore... The play must be good because Skyser's applauding it, and therefore the play must happen because there's an audience member. I mean, it's just self-justifying. It's saying, oh, the, oh yeah, humans are playing an essential role because they show up to say, gee, this place stinks. I mean, it's just so fucking insane. You know, they went, ooh, it's a maggot. Oh, therefore, they had to show up to do that. No, I don't think so. I don't think them showing up fixed the problem. I don't think them showing up was essential to any kind of correction for the problem. So I guess you can't use that as a justification, you crazy lunatic. Um, the human world is negative, but there are things we can do. Yeah, that's just Piro's. And all he wants to do is make the mess bigger. Make more people, because more people will just make more mess. Yeah, that's the way it works, asshole. They're not going to do any better than you have done with your life, which is make a fucking mess. You fucking asshole. Um, let's see. So he uses this kind of rhetoric about my rhetoric. Uh, he sets up a framing. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I'm setting up a frame. Yeah, the framing is evolution. The framing is an accurate description of what our psychology is made of and for, what its function is in the real environment, and why that function doesn't provide much option for a good game. That we're made to play a shitty game, and there's not any other game in town. But I want, um, I'm going to take. And he doesn't, he can't figure that out. Um, um, so I, again, I could just use this argument. He talks more about this. Yes, joy is crap. And so I keep saying, well, yeah, it is crap. So, so I just go back to the analogy. This is Piro. If there was three Piros and one in Mendum, right? And the three Piros voted to go to the fun park, and the Amendum said, I don't want to go to the fun, you know, they all had to do whatever you voted on. Um, I get sick, it's going to be horrible, I'm going to have a horrible time, it's going to be awful, 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 it's going to be the worst day of my fucking goddamn life, please do not force me to do this. So, the three Piros would just say, fuck you, okay, we're horny for happy, happy, joy, joy, we want to, pay, we want to chase pink balloons, and we're just going to pretend you don't exist, okay, your suffering is not going to ruin our fun fun. But the, the bottom line is it does ruin it. It does spoil the, the bad apple does poison the pie. Um, I don't need to mix much horrible suffering. I don't have to mix much torture into an equation for that equation to become unacceptable. It takes a very little amount of torture, okay, to ruin anything. Okay, a football game. It's the Super Bowl. If, if I told you before the Super Bowl, well, to have the Super Bowl, we're going to give a five-year-old cancer. Would you want the Super Bowl? Would you say, well, no, let's just can't? Would, would you reasonably say, no, let's just cancel it? I would. I can think of no event, okay? If you told me to have my garden, the kid has to get cancer, I'd say, yeah, burn it down. I mean, you know, it's short of 
making me impotent or something. I can't think of too many things I wouldn't say, yeah, take it, take it, to, to prevent that suffering. So let's not pretend our joy is, is, is equal to the suffering. Let's not, let's not have, let's, do, do, do not force me to make seven million different analogies to explain to you how if you really had to go to the store and pay real suffering for this shit, you wouldn't pay for it because it's too fucking expensive. And you goddamn know it. If it were your kids and you knew your kid was going to be paralyzed by peewee football, what, you're going to tell me you'd still vote for it? I mean, you're just such fucking hypocrites. It's okay to paralyze somebody else's kid. Yeah, as long as it's not my kid. And you're, and you're telling me this is some kind of ethics I'm supposed to respect or I'm supposed to understand logically and I'm supposed to say, gee, that makes sense. No, I don't think so. So he gets in this whole conversation about joy, and and the funny thing is, is is that you know he's he's talking as if it's a, a, a something uh, different, that it, it's a different function of the brain or something, and then he goes back to using the word satisfaction, and you're just saying, well fuck you, you just you just blew up your own argument because you're conceding that satisfaction is you know 95 percent of what we call joy, is satisfying a, a needed condition. Joy is created when the noise stops, when the guy stops mowing his lawn, okay, when the, the rain stops, when the air is clean and you can breathe it again, that kind of shit. That's what it's created by. So anyway, alright, uh, if objective negative deprivation, why not objective positive joy? So again, so he's just going to sit there and pretend, okay, yeah, the joy is equal to the negative, and that somehow, you know, in turn, just as powerful. So, and that we're running okay. It's, it's, not ter it's not that bad. Okay, we can fix this. So he's not even conceding that it's a horrific deficit for the biosphere we're dependent on. He's not acknowledging that suffering at all. He's saying it somehow works out all okay. All right, he's never interviewed the animals after they've been eaten alive um, and gotten their testimony. Um, I didn't even argue to Hoffler Day. Yeah, you know, he's such a hypocrite. You know, he, he, he keeps talking about, um, you know, this, this human volition crap and this human ability to make a statement. And animals make a statement all the time. If you ask an animal, does it, you know, st start sticking the knife in its ass and see, it'll pretty quickly it'll say no. It'll say no, and you know it's saying no. You know the pig is saying no when you're tormenting it and then killing it. You can hear it saying no if you pay any attention at all. You can hear it saying no. Leave me alone. You can hear it. Right? <laughs> so don't tell me you can't hear it. Don't tell me it's not saying it. Fuck you. You just don't want to hear it. Because you're a bigot. All right, anyway. So, um, yeah, this is, you know, we know that joy is a function of, of dependencies, addictions, desire, um, that, that these senses of appetite are aroused in us, um, and it's a need state, okay? It is not the same as suffering. So it's just stupid to say these are opposites, they balance each other, no problems, blah, blah, blah. It's bullshit. Fuck. <sighs> Irritations. <laughs> anyway, people. Whatever. Whatever. Back to business. Um, okay, so how many rainbows does it take to undo one non-consensual cancer victim? There you go. How many joys? Will these assholes ever answer these questions? No. They'll never give you an answer. They just don't give a fuck. They're nihilist, motherfucking, selfish cunts. Period. There's no, there's no ethics here. Their ethics are, I'm a selfish fuck. There's no ethics. Alright. Uh, so... Piero says, yeah, I'm a relativist, which basically means personal choice ethics. Yeah, right. So, so this has something to do with reality. And, and, you know, at the end part, the part I just ended at 22, 28, where he's talking here, he, he's doing it again. He's just changing the main, meaning of words. He says, oh, yeah, well, I, I believe in value. Really, I'm subjective. Uh, you know, and then he just changes the word subjective now to mean, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a conversation about subjects and objects, you know. Not subjective in the sense of personal emo emotional bias should dictate. No, now, now all of a sudden he's going to get into an argument about subjects and objects. I mean, there's just no fucking point. He will not stay on 
he will not stay on a common vocabulary. He'll just change the meaning of words when it's to his to to his purposes. He has no ethics when it comes to even abusing language. He will abuse it. He will rape it and molest it. He's a fucking cunt. Anyway. Um, for each person to create their own equation. Okay. Can you get any... I'm sorry, but no. You can't do that in math, and you can't do that in logic. Um, so and he basically said no absolute value, and then again later he's going to change his opinion. and Say, oh no, I believe in a kind of absolute truth that's subject... Object, it's an object, and the subject <laughs> is objectifying the subject. You know, that kind of shit. Um, anyway. Um, for themselves, more or less. There you go, right there. That's what he says. For themselves, more or less. So you just do the equation, see how you profit, and that's all you really got to worry about. Um, it's, uh, so value relative just means value selfish. It's all it is. It, you might as well be Ayn Rand, motherfucker. Same difference. Um... What's the then Skyzer chimes in? Um, what does it matter if suffering or joy? It doesn't matter. Okay, he just says that it doesn't matter. Suffering and, and joy have nothing to do with um, the function or evaluation of ethics. You can torture as many of them as you like because it just doesn't matter. And, and, and why, 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 why is anybody reasonable wasting time with somebody who believes that? Why? Um, it doesn't matter how high, World War IV, World War V, World War VII, twelve. you could pile the victims as high as you want, and you'll never choke that asshole. That's how big a cockroach he is. As long as it's somebody else. As long as it's not his sister or his kid. Yeah, I bet you that's his rule. I bet you. Um, so anyway, uh... Okay, yeah, not enjoying dying of cancer is just a psychological problem. So this is this was another one of Piero's perversions. I think it was his. Um, that somehow, if you know, if you're not, if you're suffering, well, that's because you have a psychological problem. <laughs> you know, that, that was essentially the argument. You, you know, so so if you have a tumor in your brain, you're just being you're just being a silly psychology to uh, interpret that as suffering. If you're currently afraid of dying horribly in some awful way, well, don't, because you can just psychologically pretend you're not going to do that. And that when you're actually dying in a horrible manner, just psychologically say, I'm just psychologically pretending it's not really horrible. So, yeah, just pretend that the 10,000-pound weight on your nuts isn't the 10,000-pound weight on your nuts. I mean, this is just stupid. Um... So anyway, uh, again, they still haven't explained uh, the joys that have something non-relief related. Most of them are relieves of some you know, binding condition. Um, I, I asked a question here just for the hell of it, but uh, what if everyone need to climb Mount Everest um, to get a boner? <laughs> yeah, or to be joyed. Uh, you know, would everybody be entitled? You know, I, what if it cost a million dollars? Yeah, baby, entitled. Yeah, right. Um, an uh, earned system. No, a gamed system. I don't know what that means. Um, the blah blah be damned dish. I don't know. Uh, just telling the answers on the answer form. Oh, okay. So he's just telling the animals on Animal Farm to shut the fuck up. That's basically his his response to anything that's a victim, anything that's being abused or tortured or tormented, just shut the fuck up. That's the extent of his ethics. He'll take no accountability, he'll take no responsibility. Because he's a glib, motherfucking cunt, selfish asshole. Alright, um, relative goods are created by eliminating bads. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we all know that, right? That, you know, th this is the complexity of the, of the scenario, is that the thing we call a good is, in many, many cases, correcting for a bad. So that's a truth, okay? It, but the bads aren't the absence of a good. Okay, <laughs> so, you know, the, this, the, you know, this idea that you can just set these things up as these are positive and these are negative and they cancel each other out, is not a reasonable way to diagram um, the mechanism. It's not how our brains work. It's not how sentience works. Um, that's why we have a thing called desire. 
and addiction and attraction and all of that. Um, subjective versus um, uh, objective. Well, obviously, like I said, I think we, we know um, that things that are peace, you know, serenity, relief, calm, relaxation, distractions. These are all distractions from some negative condition. So we know that most of our gratification comes with the elimination of the burdens. Um, if I take away your financial problems, you'll be relieved, comforted. If I take away your obligation to go to work, you'll be relieved and comforted. It's just the truth. Um, empathy and no emotionally invested. So that, that was the sky uh, skyzer bullshit. Yeah, and I've explained why I'm emotionally invested. Look, asshole, if I'm right, okay, you people are committing a crime that makes Hitler look like a jaywalker. Okay, the the crime you're committing is so obscene. It's like a million times the Holocaust. All right. Now, if I somebody can't get emotionally invested, if that's what they're seeing, then um, I'd say they were broken fundamentally. So yeah, I'm emotionally invested because what you're doing sucks so incredibly badly and you're such an evil motherfucker. <sighs> okay, joy and suffering don't matter. Those are his exact words. So why why are we conversa why why? Why why do I have to have a conversation with somebody that's stupid? Um yeah, you should slowly get raped by a rhinoceros, I believe I put there. Um subjective, make it up, but it's real. There. So that's where Piro left off. Subjective. It's subjective, but uh, it's real. <laughs> yeah, so this part might be worth playing later, but uh, I'll write down that time so I can resume uh, at the correct time when I go back to it. This is going to take a while, right? Two hours of this shit. Um, but I'll go to the part that I think is um, I found necessary to write the time code because there was just no way I could take notes on it. It was such a preposterous pile of shit. So, let us play it. How Gary has failed, it's that he's failed because he switches between an objective sort of framework and a subjective framework. Yeah, it's a lie. Okay? Uh, it's it just a lie. All I, The only thing I've conceded to is that I've been informed by my subjective conscious experience. Being conscious has informed me. My subjective opinion that women, like having sex with women is more fun than having sex with men. I'm not selling that on the internet, am I? I'm not selling my food tastes. I'm not selling my food preferences. I am saying I like cigarettes, but I'm saying I like cigarettes. I'm not saying anybody else should smoke cigarettes, am I, jackass? No, I'm saying exactly the opposite. So don't tell me there's any confusion or mixing here. I'm saying the fact that I'm conscious gives me, uh, informs me of what consciousness is. It informs me what horrible torment is. It informs me what uh, happiness and comfort is. It informs me. That's the end of it. I'm not making any subjective declarations based on what makes me personally feel good. I'm saying I know what bad feelings are. I'm saying they're bad whether I experience them or somebody else experiences. I'm saying broken legs are bad and I'm saying comfortable soft pillow is good. I'm, I'm, I'm making objective statements that are universal to all sentient organisms. So fuck you. There's no confusion here. There's your perversion. Your dishonesty. Calling it objective the whole while. Okay, so from this infinite point of view, what does it matter if people have a little suffering or a little joy? That is some... What, what is that? So, so again, what is it? So, so, you know, from an infinite point of view, uh, it doesn't matter how many kids I give cancer to. I mean, what, what sense does that make? Fuck you. As long as you're not the victim, right? How, what's okay? In an infinite universe, what would it matter if I just went shark fishing with Pyros all day? All day, I just shoved a hook through your fucking back, and then I threw you into the fucking water squirming like a bug. Okay, and I used you to catch sharks all day for eternity. You're telling me it doesn't matter? Fuck you, liar. You're such a fucking liar. If I could really do it, if that was the real circumstance of the universe, I could shove that hook through your flesh and throw you overboard to go catch me a sharky, 
all day, every day, forever. Don't tell me you couldn't figure out that that sucked. And it does fucking matter. Fucking liar. Thing that people that are that nihilists would would argue. They're not nihilists. They're nihilists. You fucking idiot. But Gary chooses to say that the suffering is objective. This is not done rationally. This is done through. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's not done rationally. I'm saying I have personally experienced con consciousness. I know what suffering is. I'm saying suffering sucks. Gee, that's not fucking rational. That's not objective or logical. That's some kind of perversion, some kind of personal subjective perversion. Even though every fucking animal organism that feels knows what suffering is. Every fucking single one of them. You show me an animal that doesn't know what suffering is. Show me a consciousness that just knows joy or doesn't know what suffering is. Show it to me, you fucking cunt. Oh, you can't because you don't even know what consciousness is. You don't even know it's a brain function. You're so fucking retarded. You think paramecium's are thirsty. Fucking asshole. A compassion argument that any compassion... Yeah, it's not a compassion argument. I never use the word compassion. I don't mess with this stupid empathy word either much. So that's a lie. You're just lying. This is just a fucking lie. So lie some more. Because you're a cunt. A lying cunt. person will consider suffering an actual negative, call it objective, whatever. I acknowledge that we should try to reduce suffering. Oh, you, you, so, so Piro declares the fact that we should reduce suffering. So the very argument I'm making that suffering is bad, that he says is just subjective, he's saying, no, I endorse that argument. Yeah, I agree, that's, uh, that's probably right. You, fuck you. But somebody that doesn't want to accept that can just talk about some kid that thinks he's suffering, some rich kid, because he didn't get a Porsche for his 16th birthday. Right. So we can't make distinctions. So when you say suffering, you're talking about a kid with a Porsche. You're not talking about a girl with cancer or a kid with cancer. So, you, you know, you just make this shit up, right? Somebody's moany because they have an emotional problem, even though it's bad. I mean, emotional problems are real. Um, but still, it's because it has a non-external cause, by your definition... Um, not justified because it's some sort of brain function that, that, that makes them feel bad, um, you're going to discount it. Or you're going to say they're allowed to discount it. Fuck you. Right. So that's why I don't think those are even objective things. They're, the, by definition, subjective things. The fact that they're suffering is not subjective, is it? Is the fact that they're suffering subjective? No, it's not. There can be somebody in a mental institution because they have delusional psychology. Now, it has no, like, grotesque external cause. It's all just some sort of internal noise going on inside their brain. But their experience is real, you stupid shit. Right. But then he switches and uses a whole different framing for joy. And because it's a whole different thing, you stupid shit. And instead of talking about the joy of watching your child grow up that is <laughs> yeah whatever that means so you're such a, you're you're such an asshole did you do you enjoy when she died did you enjoy when your child died i, I mean this is just so stupid you're going to talk about your subjective nonsensical wishy-washy mishy mushy desire to molest kids to voyeur their life okay where i personally would find it terribly burdensome i the worry alone just the worry alone because i see i'm logical and rational and i already knew when i was fucking 10 years old that having a kid would mean a huge responsibility i knew having a pet lizard was a responsibility you need to be fed every day and you had to make sure birds didn't need it but you're too stupid to figure any of that shit out and that's why you fucked it up it's because you're a stupid motherfucker is suddenly meaningless, and he will pull that 16-year-old kid kind of trick on joy by calling joy just an orgasm or personal gratification using some form of joy. That's yeah, no, I'm. give me any example of your joy, and I'll say it's just something you're addicted to, okay? You're saying you like soccer, and I'm supposed to say it means something, okay? I'm saying watching a kid grow up is not joyful for me. It's a worry for me. So for me, there's no joy involved. There's just intense and, and, and constant and perpetual worry. So 
you know, what, what do you want me to say? Yeah, your subjective enjoyment of your stupid soccer game, to me, might as well be uh, the Coliseum. It might as well be watching a carnage war. I'm not going to get any joy out of this. So what the, why should it mean something to me? It doesn't logically mean anything to me. I don't think there's any absolute statement you can say, it's absolutely a good thing to watch children grow up. No, it isn't. It's your stupid fucking emotional taste. You have an emotional problem where you need to voyeur, okay, other people's lives and somehow gain satisfaction from watching their hearts get broken and for their, their all their skin knees and then when they get cancer and die, you somehow like doing that. Well, I think it's disgusting and grotesque. Somebody else is getting, uh, you know, taking the negative hit from, right? So it's like a zero-sum game that's actually a negative-sum game. Like, like you like... Well, well, a zero-sum game implies negative sum in the sense that you have to do it perfect to get to the zero. So, yeah, obviously a zero-sum game means you're probably going to be in negative ground. You get joy from, you know, going jogging every day, and, but, you know, you get one unit of joy from that, and it costs five negative units of pain for the sweatshops making your jogging shoes, right? Oh. So it's a game. I just think it's a game system. It doesn't apply uh, one conceptual frame. It's oh, I, I don't know. That sounds like one conceptual frame, that everything you get, you have to pay for. Sometimes you personally pay, that's your business, one could argue, but most of the cost for your existence is going to be taken out of somebody else's pocket, and you have to justify that theft of their welfare, and you will you spend no time justifying any of it. You will not account for it, you will not accept it, you just say, shut the fuck up. That's your response, and it's bogus, and I say it's bullshit, and I say your ethics are vacant and bankrupt, and you fucking suck. As deep as suck can suck. You really are. You are a piece of suck. I don't think Mangala is stupid as you are. Mangala could probably make more sense in a conversation than you are. You fucking disgusting piece of shit. I mean, you have Frankenstein failure all over the place, and yet you'll advocate for people's right to try again. Grind another one up. Fuck the victims. Fuck you!